I am excited to talk to you about how to love your clothes so that you're going to feel comfortable, confident, and put together. But I want to take a moment. I want you to take note that being comfortable in your clothes doesn't mean loungewear. It doesn't mean cozies, okay? We should have comfort and confidence at the baseline of everything that touches our body. If it's not comfortable, it's that's a hard no. Like, no, we're just not doing it. Comfort can be in any clothing that you are going to wear no matter what you're doing. Comfort is not just for Netflix and chill, pajamas and bedtime, Sunday morning. Comfort can happen in all of your outfits. So I want you to always remember comfort, confidence, baseline. If it doesn't meet those two basic needs, it needs to go. We're not suffering for the name of fashion here. So there can be a few things that can make you feel uncomfortable in your clothing. And it doesn't mean that just because it's not leggings, it's uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable because you're wearing the wrong clothes in the wrong setting. If you are too dressed up for the playground and you have on heels and you need to chase a toddler and you're just kind of wobbling around and maybe you're in a, you know, a pencil skirt from work, you're going to be uncomfortable trying to do the things you need to do in clothing that doesn't work. You're going to be uncomfortable in a setting of a formal wedding if you showed up in like leggings and Uggs and a sweatshirt, right? You would feel uncomfortable knowing I did not <laughs> wear the right outfit. I think everyone can relate to this. Let me know. You can be uncomfortable if your jeans don't fit and you're constantly doing the shimmy. If they're sliding down and you're constantly thinking about pulling it up every time you sit down, every time you stand up, but the crotch just gets like a little bit longer and you do that, you know, a little shimmy. Anyone else or just me? It's uncomfortable to have to think about your clothes all day long when you're wearing them and they don't fit. Does anyone have a pair of jeans they just can't wait to rip off when they get home because they're so uncomfortable? That makes you think, oh, maybe style isn't for me. Maybe you have thought like a stylist is going to tell me I need to be uncomfortable in the name of fashion and that's not who I am and that's not what you need to do. So if anyone tells you that, I would just, you know, I would go the other direction. If we haven't met, I'm Jamie, a former Hollywood stylist. And five years ago, I can't believe it's been that long, I started this virtual styling business for real women like you so that you could live your life styled. Because style isn't just for her. It isn't just for celebrities. It is for the everyday woman who's doing the things, right? You're doing all the things. You're busy. And you can look good while doing them. I want you to know that there are a few style struggles that you're probably not alone in. And when I read these and when I talk to you about them, I want you to let me know in the chat, is this you? Can you relate? Are you frustrated by shopping because you go and nothing fits? Like you go to the store, you grab everything, right? You're a true size six, like you're a medium and you're a six and you grab the medium shirt and the size six pants and you put it on and it just like doesn't go past your hips. Or maybe in the next store, the size six is like, you could pull the waistband out and fit two of you in there. It doesn't make any sense. You put on a dress and it's way too long or the pants are just like not working for you. Has anyone felt like that where you're totally frustrated, Jamie? Yes. Oh, all of them? Good. I'm not the only one. I've definitely been in these scenarios just like you. Do you ever buy clothing that you just wear once or maybe clothing with a tag on it where you buy the piece for the thing you wear it once and then you don't know what to do with it after that. So you end up with like all these pieces in your closet and you thought they were cute and maybe they are, you just never wear them again. The inconsistency of sizing is, is a thing, Lindsay, for sure. It's definitely a thing. Do you ever feel like you have, okay, wait, before I say this one, if you don't say, yes, that's me, I think you're lying. I think that every woman has been in this scenario because it is the number one complaint or struggle I get or I heard a friend phones me, I have nothing to wear. You have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. Have you ever looked at your clothes and you know you're like staring at clothes. There are things to put on your body, 
but you have somewhere to go and you just feel like you have nothing to wear to the place you have to go. Yes to all of them, Heather. Are you tolerating your work wardrobe? Do you have like maybe an outdated Banana Republic suit and some express trousers that you've been holding on to and they don't make you feel really good, but they're just work clothes, right? Like there's nothing wrong with them. They fit you, they work, you put them on and you have this like rotating few pieces, few outfits that you wear to work because they work. <laughs> Jamie says it drives her husband crazy when she changes her clothes three times before an event. I bet it drives you crazy too. It can be really frustrating to do that. Do you ever feel like you're settling for one frumpy weekend outfit? So you've got like the shirt or the dress and that's your, that's your outfit. Like that's your thing you wear on the weekends when you see people like you you know, if you're going to lunch with somebody, you're going to the in-laws, you're going to dinner, like you got the shirt. It's like the Saturday shirt. It's the one shirt. Has anyone ever been in that scenario where it's like, I don't, I got Monday through Friday, but I, what do I wear on Saturday afternoon? Do you ever feel like you put on clothes and it's like, I just can't feel put together. Like, I just don't know how to make this outfit, like feel put together and work for me. Anyone? Jamie says, when I wear something new on the weekend, my kids ask me where I'm going. I'm telling you, kids notice. Kids notice everything. It's true. Claire says, she's been following me for a while and doing research, but when I get the most discouraged with shipping, I find it's really hard to trust my taste. So have any of you ever bought clothes in the store, get home and realize you don't like them and then return them? Yes, that is that happens. The frustration of returns is legit. You get in this cycle, right? Where like you're buying something, it doesn't work, it doesn't fit. And, and you put it on and you just know, oh, it's not working. And then it's just so much of a pain to go through. Like, then I got to order another size and then I have to wait for it, the credit to hit my account. And then they ran out of my size. It's a whole cycle. And I will say since COVID, oh my goodness, the amount of inventory in store is a little bit sad, right? Okay. But the thing is, it didn't used to be this hard, did it? Do you remember when you were younger and you go to the mall? Remember going to the mall? That was like the thing to do, right? You go to the mall, you hit a food court, you grab your friends, you go to the store and you're all like in this bubble, right? It's you and your friends. And this is your, your circle of influence. And you all like the same thing and you wear the same thing and you shop at the same store and you're pretty much the same size. And this is what's cool. And this is what you like. And this is what you wear. Anyone else remember the days like that? Where, what stores did you like to shop at when you would go shopping with your friends when you enjoyed shopping? Lindsay says, can we talk about Amazon sizing and how bad it is? You don't want me to get on an Amazon. I'm not an Amazon clothing fan. Very rarely. Karen says, trouble finding clothes because I'm afraid my backside looks too big and feel discouraged. Amy says, I love Delia's. Anyone else live for the Delia's catalog? That was me. Where did you guys like to shop? My favorite growing up, this is going to tell you my age a little bit, was Deb Rave and Mariposa. Can't forget that one. I would go to the mall with my friends. We'd just grab what we thought was cute. We'd head into the dressing room and we'd try it on. Like that shirt looks ridiculous. Try on this one. We'd kind of like style each other. Like, oh my gosh, if you get that skirt, can I wear it next week to school? Like you had a much bigger wardrobe than the one in your closet because you all shared, right? Like, Oh my gosh, Express. Charlotte Roos. Oh my gosh, Charlotte Roos. I have not heard that for Ever. But it was fun, right? You put on clothes, you get feedback, you leave what doesn't work, you take what did, or what your mom would buy you, or how much you had from your, your summer job or whatever. But it was fun. It wasn't this overwhelming, exhausting scenario. And now our circle of influence has gone from like right here in our people to Pinterest and Instagram and TikTok and every hack and tip and trick and every trend that you need you have to have there there's more than just your friend saying hey like these Jenko jeans or airwalk shoes or whatever this sweater is really cool right now 
I remember when I had to have this V-neck express sweater and we all had it in different colors and we would just exchange like today I'm wearing the gray, tomorrow I'm wearing the pink and we loved it. And that was our thing. And now our influence, our sphere of influence has expanded, exploded. And you have everything, all of the noise and it's overwhelming. It's like, who do I listen to? Which way do I look? Do you have a folder of safe tips, tricks and hacks on your Instagram account? And one day you're going to get to those. But as soon as you get to it, and as soon as you buy the cool thing in December, in January, it's not cool. And you need this to be relevant and you need that. And it's just noisy. And it's not anyone thinking this is what you need because it's going to serve you. It's going to fit you. It's going to work for you. It's just a lot of overwhelming. Who's overwhelmed by it? Oh my gosh, the limited. Yes. Who's overwhelmed by all of the fashion noise out there. Fashion is a consumer driven business and they need you to keep buying that next new thing, that next new thing, or else they're gonna go out of business, right? Like it is it's so fast. It was fun when we were younger and when our influence was small, but now it just seems to move lightning fast, doesn't it? Look, I want you to think about going shopping and how it relates to going grocery shopping. Could you imagine making a list like this? You go to the store and you grab, my husband will totally shop like this, like get home, like, but did you get a meal? Well, no, I got some snacks, but did you get a meal? Well, don't you have everything? <laughs> I don't know if anyone can relate to that. Or have you ever gone to the grocery store hungry and you just get all the goodies, right? So we've got Alfredo sauce. But if you don't have the chicken and the noodles and you're probably going to want some salad, how are you going to make a meal? And you've got to have the dressing, right? That's like going to finish it all off for the salad because nobody wants a dry salad. If you've got guacamole and tortillas, yum, that's a great snack. But if you don't have the protein, it's not a meal. Cookies, pretzels, my kids would like to think it's a meal. It's not. Bacon, orange juice, okay, that could work, but it doesn't feel complete without the eggs, right? It's not a complete meal. So if we go to the grocery store and we fill up our bag with everything that looks good because we're hungry and we get home, we have no meal. And the same thing happens when you go shopping in an emergency because you need to wear something on Saturday to that party or you have the school event for your kid on Tuesday and you need a shirt or you're going on vacation and all of a sudden you need 600 new outfits in every size, and you're gonna wear 14 pairs of shoes and it's three days, right? You need, everything needs to be new and I need it right now. And when we shop in that sense of, oh my gosh, it's a emergency, it's a fashion emergency. It's the same thing as going shopping when you're super hungry. Like I need the cookies and the guacamole. No girl, you need the chicken and the pasta, right? You need to make the meal. It's the same thing with style. If you don't have basics, you don't have outfits. You can grab more clothes for this and more a one-off for that and a shirt for this and a dress on sale because you went to Target to get your toothpaste, but that floral dress from last season is now on clearance for $8.99 and you have to have it. Even though a year from now when you go to wear it, what are you gonna wear it with? Will you even like it? Nobody knows, but you had to have it, right? Think of the basics in a wardrobe like the basics in your pantry. You've got the butter and the salt and the pepper and the flour and the milk. Like you have the things so that when you get the pasta home, you can actually cook it with what you need to cook it with. It is the same thing with style. When you bring something home, if you have the basics to work with, you're going to have outfits. This is my absolute favorite part of style. Look, there's a domino effect to style. It is scientifically proven. You, this is a hill I will die on. This is what makes it all worth it because I know you want a cute shirt. I know you want the cute top and jeans for your weekend. I know you want to look good in Target and have someone compliment you. You know there's a difference between like, I like your shirt, that's cute, or I like your outfit, like the whole thing. That means when you put it on, you were kind of feeling yourself. You were you were in the moment. That outfit made you feel like you and she noticed. And that feels good. Cute clothes are great. 
a fun wardrobe is great, but what I want for you and what I think you want for you is the domino effect, the side effect of the style life. So I want you to tell me with what's on this screen right now, what, what do you want the most of? Fully present, increased confidence, deeper connections, more money. Who doesn't want an increased income? Scientifically proven, a minimum of 20% increased income if you dress for the job. Establishing authority at work, more energy. I mean, if you're a mom, that one has to like stick out like a sore thumb, right? There's only so many cups of coffee that can get us through the day. More fun. Do you know one of my favorite side effects of style? And I think this is, this could be a motherhood in marriage is what sticks out the most to me in friendships, in life in general, but you have more fun. There's like a lightness about you because everything feels good and you feel like you and you just start having more fun, which is important, right? Jamie says, increase confidence so I can feel confident in my own skin and re represent who I am on the outs on the inside with the clothing on the outside. I love that so much. I love that about the income and productivity. I feel like since I've been working at home, I don't dress for the job and I feel it in my job. Yes, it's so true. And I think that 2020 changed the whole realm of style and we have settled into this cozy version of comfort and it's just a lie if being that comfortable should be the book into your day to go watch netflix right not to put out your best work when you're in the right outfit you're showing up the best way you can whether it's at the playground or on the floor with your kids leading a boardroom opening your business pitching to clients speaking from a stage sitting by yourself in your house working from your laptop when you look down that does something to you you feel something based on what you've put on your body and you can choose to recognize that that reflection of yourself is the most important every day because when you feel a certain way, you are going to act a certain way to the people and the work that means the most to you that are the most important, right? So if we believe the lie of like, it's just me at home working. No, that's such a lie. It's not just a you at home working. It's, it matters how you show up, how you feel about yourself. And that's going to show in the work that you put out into the world or for your company or for someone else's company that you work for. It all works together. Claire says, increased confidence with my choice of outfits. Oh, I love that. Yes, these are the, the side effects of style, the domino effect of style that have been scientifically proven. You can't deny it. I see it day in and day out with members and clients. And it is so much fun to watch it happen. And it really can happen for you. There, But there are some things keeping you stuck. There are some things keeping you from all of those ways that you want to feel, right? Cute outfit, it's a cherry on top. The way you feel, show up and live your life, that's what really matters. But there's a few key things keeping you stuck in your style struggles. It doesn't have to be this way. You might not know where to shop or what to buy. And when you're feeling stuck in your style struggles and in the in feeling like I'm not confident, I I don't feel like I'm putting out my best work or I don't like my outfit or someone said they feel like their backside doesn't look as good. It gets more frustrating when you don't know like where do I go to find the clothes that don't make me feel this way. And that goes back to what we said earlier about all of the influence and the noise, right? Well, this person swears Amber Abercrombie is great. And this person tells me the Amazon dupes every single day that I have to have. I mean, the amount of boxes people open from Amazon to tell you that you need because it's all $35, which sounds great until you buy them every day for a month and you could have bought some really great things that you really love instead of what an influencer just is cranking out every day. You're saving all these Instagram and TikTok and Pinterest outfits and tips and tricks, but are you applying them? Or are you just saving them? 
are you using them on clothes you don't love? Are you just like taking in all of the noise? Because it can be so hard, right? But when, have you ever taken an outfit and put it on? Say it's one of these Amazon dupes or Abercrombie must have. And it's so cute on her and you put it on you and it's like, mm, has anyone done that? Anyone ever compared themselves to like, oh, or it feels like if I buy that dress, if I get that blazer, if I get those shoes, it's going to be, everything's going to be better. Like as soon as you get that dopamine hit from ordering it, like it's so good on her. I'm going to look like that. It shows up at your doorstep. You try it on and you're defeated again because maybe you don't look like her, right? Has anyone ever experienced, Amy says every time. I have also fallen for that. And I just remember thinking, Jamie, you know better. You know better. <laughs> it can happen to anyone. I think it's probably happened to 100% of my friends as well. Like, I don't think I'm alone. I don't think Amy's alone in that. The comparing can be so hard. You get stuck in this cycle of trying something. It doesn't fit. And then keeping it because you don't know the return window and you miss it or it costs money and you sit in your, it sits in your closet. You've wasted time, energy efforts and you're just over it right look there's a few things you need to know before you go shopping so that it doesn't look like that anymore once you learn these things you can look at shopping differently you can approach this with some skill with some knowledge with some intention you need to know your style type what do you like to wear not what everyone says is cool not what you should wear not what is the latest and greatest, but what do you like to wear? Do you need to be able to differentiate between what you like to wear on your body and what you admire on hers? Because you could look at someone in this beautiful slip dress, right? She's 5'9", she's got a straight up and down body. It is gorgeous on her, it just lays so beautifully. And then you put it on your body and you're five foot five like me with hips that don't lie, and that thing just looks, it just, what happened? It doesn't fall the same way. The fabric doesn't do the same thing, right? You need to learn what you like for you, not just for everyone else. And maybe you have classic, a style type could be classic. You like preppy, you like minimal, you like menswear inspired. Do you like something a little bit edgy and fashion forward, a little bit eccentric? Do you like boho or... Maybe you need a touch of sporty in your outfit. You're very active. And if you have something sporty on, you feel like you. You need to know your body shape. And I am not talking about every postpartum woman who says, I've had a baby and now I'm bigger in the middle. It's just not true. Assuming your body shape is killing your style game. You need to actually know how to determine your body shape so that you can use clothing to create balance and proportion for your specific body shape. Once you have that information, you can look at clothing like pieces of a puzzle that go together to create that visual effect of proportion and balance. I think that lifestyle often gets overlooked, probably more times than not. You need to know what you're getting dressed for. You don't need to go get an outfit for a Saturday party, right? You probably have something to wear. What you do need an outfit for is Saturday morning soccer games that happen over and over and over again. Do you ever have an event where you're like, every time I go to get ready for X, I have nothing to wear? Do you ever feel like that? Like you've probably been doing soccer practice on Saturday mornings for three years with your kids, but you always feel sloppy and frumpy. And when all the moms and families wanna go out to lunch afterwards, you feel like, well, it was a hurry in the morning and it's muddy and it's cold and it doesn't matter. But when something that is consistent and repetitive turns into something that doesn't matter in your mind, it shows in your confidence and it shows in the way you show up to that lunch. It shows in the way you show up to cheer on your child. Life is not made up of a bunch of big extravagant moments. Those are very few and far between. That's not what's gonna put the mark on our confidence or how we show up in life. It's the repetitive everyday mundane working by yourself from home behind the computer day in and day out. It's the soccer game every Saturday morning for the next 10 years because you have four kids. 
it's the showing up for date night, even when you don't feel like it and putting in a little effort and maybe not the granny panties with your husband. It's the little moments that make up your life, not the big things that we think shopping is all about, right? When you can pay attention to what you need to wear for the life you have, not the life you had or the life you wish you had. I think a lot of women find themselves in a scenario where you come from corporate, so now you have kids and you're stay at home and you have pencil skirts and button ups and pumps. So when you go to the playground every day, you have nothing to wear and you're like, oh, when the kid grows up, well, it's not, it doesn't matter. It matters. It happens every single day. It matters. Or maybe your kids are in school and you're starting a business or you're going back to work and the way you show up to pitch new clients or business partners or interview for a job, you didn't buy the right clothes. You bought like the one outfit at the consignment store that you didn't pay attention to. You just bought it because you needed it for the one time and you can feel it when you show up. So not having the right clothes for your lifestyle is a big, big miss. Myth. <laughs> Sorry. It, if you don't, you know, I said it right the first time. It's a big miss. If you don't consider that, when you're shopping and you keep writing off the everyday moments, you're never going to have a wardrobe you love. You're never going to go shopping for the right clothes. Stop shopping for the big moments like they matter more than the little moments. And I want you to take note that I did not put money on here. You don't need a lot of money. You can shop. I would rather you shop at a consignment store or a thrift store, Poshmark, and buy higher quality clothes that you love that are for you, not what everyone else says you need to wear versus a bunch of, excuse me, fast fashion, Amazon dupes, all of the things you need to have right now. You don't have to have a big budget. You could have $100, you could have $10,000. It doesn't matter. You can have style no matter your budget, your body shape, your size, your weight. Body shape doesn't have to do with your weight and size. It has to do with your body composition, how your bones are structured. It This stuff does isn't just for her. It's for you too. One of the things we do when we go shopping and it's hard and it's, it sounds so fun to buy like the really fun statement dress, right? We buy clothes that don't go together. Just like we talked about earlier, buying clothes because you need it for an event or you need it on sale. It, it makes up this closet of clothes with nothing to wear. You look at all these things and it kind of looks like the screen you're looking at. These are beautiful pieces of clothing. Some of them are in my current style guide. Some of them I've been recommending to clients for years. Some of them are just really fun, but you know what's not there? What I don't like about this is that there's not even one outfit. Not one. Isn't that crazy? Just because you have all of the knowledge you need doesn't mean you're still shopping with intention. You still need to be able to put together the right pieces. Kind of like this. That's what I help my Style Society members figure out. You need pieces that are intermixable. You need pieces that go together. You need the basics that are mostly solids, neutrals. You need a few prints. You need a few colors. You need basics if you want to have outfits. And you need basics that work for you and your lifestyle. So you can take your, your clothes and make them work for what you're doing in your life. You can make them work for work at home, Saturday soccer, board meetings, whatever your life looks like, your wardrobe needs to reflect that, not the past version of your life, not the dream version of your life in the future, when all the stars align and everything magically happens and you have all the money and the perfect style and you're perfectly fit and you have all the time in the world to go shopping, right? Because at that point, if you haven't taken the time to like really figure out your true style, you're still going to have a lot of expensive, beautiful clothes that don't and nothing to wear. Money can't buy you style. You have to figure out what works for you so that you can go to the store with intention. Then you need your end game in mind before buying the clothes. When you go to the store, you don't just buy the Alfredo, right? We talked about you buy the noodles. 
and the chicken too. You buy the salad and then you gotta top it off with the dressing. Don't forget the little details. It's the same thing with style. You need to know what the outfit is you're working with, what you're getting dressed for and what that full outfit at the end needs to be. You knew that meal was gonna be chicken Alfredo, salad and bread. You don't need to go buy another shirt. You need to know that you have all the basics that go with that shirt. It makes all the difference. This is my Style Society member, Lauren. I help members in Style Society figure this all out, right? Because it can sound like a lot, like, okay, I need to know these things. I need to know those things. And how does that really play out? What does it look like? Lauren is a wife, a mom, and a business owner. She, like most of you, wears a lot of hats. She does a lot of different things. And like most of you, she likes to be comfortable. She wants to feel confident. And she also wants to look put together. This is her favorite t-shirt by her favorite brand in her favorite basic color, favorite silhouette, favorite jeans. They're the right rise for her, the right silhouette. They work for everything she's doing. So what she did was she curated a wardrobe that works for her. She can go to a client meeting. She can go to the playground with her one-year-old. She can go to her son soccer game. She can go on a date night with her husband or out to coffee with her girlfriends. Those basics make outfits. It's all in the intention behind knowing what you need for you and your life that reflects your style, right? It's so much fun when you can make your closet work for you. And one thing you might be doing is just putting on clothes, but not actually styling them. Do you ever feel like that? Like, have you seen these reels? And I'm sure TikTok, I don't have TikTok, so I'm not sure, but I think it's popular over there too, where it's like wearing clothes versus styling your clothes. So has anyone looked at that? Like, oh my gosh, yes. It's such a fun, a fun trend in reels to look at. This is Lauren's basic and this is styled. When you know how to take an outfit, you've built your basics, you've got your layers and your shoes and your accessories and turn it into an outfit or 10, it makes all the difference. Do you see what she's done here? She has done a full tuck of her shirt. She's added a layer a belt, some boots, some earrings. She's ready to go. There are other things you can do like add a belt or add a statement necklace. You can swap out the shoes. You can scrunch up the sleeve like I've done with this blazer and create space. It's knowing what to do with your outfit and when that's gonna make all the difference in getting dressed, putting on basics, looking a little basic, right? Because this does nothing for her body. There's nothing wrong with it, but most women would put that on and feel like, well, the person on Instagram or Pinterest had on a white t-shirt and I bought the one from the link and this is what I look like and that's what she looks like. There was a lot of steps in between she didn't tell you about. There was a lot of things that went into her buying the exact pieces that were for her body and her style type that she left out in the link because you don't get all that information. You have to learn for yourself what works for you because style is a skill. That's what is so exciting to me is that style is a skill that you can learn. You don't learn by learning. You learn by doing, right? We talked about all of those style tips, tricks, and hacks, and you can store those up and you can save them and you can like consume, consume, consume tips, tricks, hacks, dupes, trends, like got it, still have nothing to wear. But when you learn the skill of style, your body shape, your style type, your lifestyle, and you learn how to put those all together, you can choose pieces that curate a wardrobe that's totally intermixable and you, you'll know how to finish it off with the details. Putting your personal style twist on that outfit. Somebody else could take Lauren's same t-shirt and jeans and make it look completely different, right? That is, it's not quite magic. That is just the exciting thing about the skill of style. But if you don't implement what you've learned, if you don't do it, 
then if you don't get the insight on what you need for you, you're never going to feel confident that you're even putting together the right outfits, right? It's going to feel so foreign and far away. And you're just going to get another tip, another trick, another hack. But you're going to try to apply it to clothes you don't even love that don't work for you. Claire says, this is me. <laughs> I read and listened to the videos, but going out into the shopping world feels intimidating and exciting. There's definitely a dopamine hit that comes with like a new thing, right? Let's go get a new thing. But this wasn't even in my notes to talk about. One of the best things about curating a wardrobe that works for you, full of basics with the fun little pops of trends and colors and things, is that you can get that same dopamine hit from your own closet because you can take all that consumption now that you have clothes you love and you can start implementing and you can make new outfits. And that new to you outfit, shopping your closet, is the same exact thing as what happens to your brain when you go buy something new off of Amazon. Except guess what? You're gonna love it. Like you don't even have to wait to love it. You don't have to wait for that. You have it right there in your closet. You have access to it every single day. And it becomes this like fun part of who you are and how you get to express who you are from the inside on the outside. Look, we learned today that it's a skill. And we learned that when you have intention and you build the pieces, it can be intermixable and you can get that dopamine hit. You can be creative. You can use those tips and tricks and hacks. And, and it's one thing to just learn it and sit on it and be intimidated by it because it seems like so much. And it's another thing to start implementing and doing. But remember we talked about earlier, having more confidence. What were those things you were excited about? You want to have more confidence. You want to be more fully present. You want to make more money. You want to show up better for your people and for your work. You want more energy because there's a lot of things to do in your day. You want to feel better and show up better, right? What are those things that are still sticking to you that you're like, yes, I want more of that? Is there anybody who has something that's still sticking out to them about, I want to feel blank? I think for me, the number one drive when I had children was confidence and energy because I just didn't want to feel like I lost myself. I wanted to feel like me and I could be me and a mom. And clothing was one of the easiest ways to do that quickly. Not, not something that like, you know, I was going to lose the weight eventually and that's going to come and it's going to be a lot of dieting and workouts. So I got to wait till I'm done breastfeeding. And that was a delayed gratification. But even at my postpartum weight, I could dress well and feel confident because I found the right things and show up as a better mom and business owner and share that joy with others. That was what was most exciting for me. Is there anything that is like, oh yeah, I want that too. Anybody excited about more energy, more confidence, actually getting to use your style tips and tricks. I want you to know that if you learn the skill of style, you can have those things. You can walk away today from this class and you've learned a lot and you can look at shopping differently and you can look at your closet differently and you can go about this with more intention. But the truth is, it's a lot to go figure it out yourself. It's a lot to go search the internet and figure out what order to put these in to take it from basic to styled. What do I need for my body? You can do that if you've got hours to scan, you know, the internet and put it all together and buy the wardrobe. But then what happens? You're left on your own. You have some new clothes and you put them on, but you're not like, does this really work or does it not? Right. Have you ever felt like that? Like you get something home and you feel like you kind of love it and you think it works, you think, but you don't have that confidence to like walk out the door and go to Target. Like. I'm going to put that sweatshirt back on. I'm going to put those leggings back on because I know it works and I can just like blend in and go down the street and it's fine. But if I put this outfit on, I really love, I don't know, does it work or does it not? And that's where having someone who has figured it out and who can give you feedback really comes in clutch. 
I want to introduce you to the Style Society, and I want to invite you to join me inside of it because I've been where you are. I have been in a place where confidence and the skill of style seemed out of reach. I have been through so many transitions in life where, oh my gosh, I had a C-section, postpartum, like I need high rise pants, I need some stretch, like what's happening here? I fell into the lie of leggings, of comfort at home. Nobody sees me, it's okay. And it had a really big effect on my confidence. It affected my business, the way I showed up in my motherhood, my mental health. And I created something so that other women didn't have to go through that. So that they would know there is a better way. There's a better way for you. And there's a better way for me. And I've done the work and I've created a program so that it can be accessible to you. And I've used this method on hundreds of women, probably even thousands at this point. And so I know it works on every body shape and every style type. It works for every lifestyle. So I want to invite you in because you're busy, right? You can take all that time. If you don't even have time to go shopping and do the returns and figure that out, how are you also going to add all that other stuff in? I created this for you. And inside of the Style Society, when you first join, you have access to the method I created. From the jump, it is instant access to your lifestyle. We go through the steps of aligning your style, figuring out your style type and your body shape and your lifestyle and how to really know and have clarity around what those are and editing your wardrobe. What works for you and what used to work for you? They're not the same thing. And what's not working needs to go. Then you learn how to curate the basics and the pops of trends and the shoes and the layers and how to put those all together with accessories so that then you can build outfits. You can take all those basics and trends and accessories that you've curated and put them together to make outfits that are aligned with your style, that work for your lifestyle, that feel good, feel comfortable, and you're totally confident in them. And you can rinse and repeat this formula, right? Once you know, like Warren, like my basic formula is a t-shirt, jeans, a duster in the fall and some boots, right? She can kind of like intermix that, rinse, repeat, done. She knows what works for her. And when she goes to her closet to grab something to wear, everything in there fits her. There's no, no, that mm -mm, that's 10 pounds ago. Nope, that's from when I used to have fun before kids. No, that's when I had a, a job when I left the house. None of that happens anymore when you do this with intention. And I, the best part about this is that you can start living your lifestyle by putting all these together, these 10 steps. They are quick, easy, bite-sized steps. So they're available both via podcast, so you can listen to the audio on the go, or if you're like a diehard student, like you want to get in this, you want to watch the video, you want to take the notes, you want to fill out the worksheets, you can do that too if you want to. It is made for every woman that wants to learn about style, no matter what her schedule looks like. So if you're busy and learning about your style feels like, oh my gosh, I have created something that's for you, something that is going to make style accessible. No matter what your budget, what your size is, what your lifestyle is, no matter if you like prim and proper polished style or you like edgy or boho and relaxed, it doesn't matter. This is a method that works for everyone, which is kind of the magic and fun inside of it. Inside the Style Society, once you've gone through those 10 steps, that's the first thing you do. Go through the 10 steps and within a matter of weeks, you could be on it, like, yes, ready to go. The members inside the Style Society, their favorite part is this right here. This is a style guide. I curate this every season before the fall, before the season starts, like before the fall, a couple weeks before this came out. This is a, an actual screenshot of a guide inside the Style Society for this past fall, 2023. You get a checklist and see that square that's kind of shaded. Those are all the basic essentials. They knew to get those first. Then you can have more fun shop your closet, figure it out. Then you can take my swaps cheat sheet. Say there's something in here like a graphic sweatshirt, right? That's a little more edgy and sporty. What if you're super polished? That swaps cheat sheet would tell you that if you're more classic style, you should swap that for a crew neck fitted sweater. 
you're going to get the same effect, but you're going to feel like you. It's so much fun. So this comes out every season. You can shop every piece, use it for inspiration. It's a capsule wardrobe for that season that's completely customizable. I give you the framework, you customize it. Every month, there's a style guide drop based on what the members are getting dressed for. So this month in November, they were getting dressed for Thanksgiving, obviously, casual, fancy, elevated casual. They were traveling. A lot of them were getting on planes or driving long car rides for Thanksgiving. Some of them were going, were really excited about fall date nights. Um, and some of them really wanted some fun girls night outfits. Cause you know, you get dressed for the girls usually, right? Like the husbands might think like, mm, I don't know, but when you're feeling it and your girls are feeling it, you know, you've hit it, right? Like you've got it on point. So they wanted to get dressed for girls night. That's the style guide that I created this month. In the summer, it might be denim shorts for your body shape, swimsuits for your body shape. In the winter, it might be how to curate a coat capsule wardrobe. Everything you need season by season to stay updated and on top of style is included in the style guide. There's also a private podcast that you get instant access to. So every guide that comes out has an audio training with it. And in that training, I walk you through what are the trends that are wearable right now? Which one should you try? Which one shouldn't you try? What's the most updated denim silhouette? What's the most updated boot uh, toe shape, right? What's the most updated heel? What do you need in your wardrobe to just refresh it a little bit? What body shape does the trouser I put in here work for best? I walk you through why I chose what I chose and who it's for, what trends you need. So you have like bite-sized access to this season. So you don't have to consume everything out there. It's curated right here for you. And then when you go to look at everything out there, you have clarity like that works for me. That influencer is actually my size. This one actually has the same lifestyle as me. I actually would wear those outfits. And last time I ordered one, it worked for me. Last time I ordered one from her, it didn't work. I'm going to stop following here. I'm going to do this and I'm going to put this together. And what does Jamie say in her guide? Okay, this makes sense. I can make it work for me. It's curated for you. And my, I, my favorite part of all of this is the community. This is totally optional. You could like, hey, I just want the guides and the podcast to my inbox every month so I know how to stay up to date. Cool. If you want to have a little bit of that nostalgia, remember we talked about going shopping with your girls and trying it on and giving feedback. If you want that in your life again, because why do we stop doing that? This is for you. The Facebook group, I've never met a mean girl. I've been doing this for three years. Everyone is so kind. In this photo, you can see Dr. Charla here, she's got on all of her outfits for fall that she's like, this is her core uniform. And she was sharing it for feedback. We come on here and give each other feedback, give access to me, to the other women. Some of them have been members for, since I started for like three years. And so they know a lot and they can help me give feedback when you don't know what to wear to a funeral or a wedding or to a date night because you haven't left the baby in forever and you need to know like does this look okay it's not leggings and a sweatshirt am I good they'll give you honest feedback and if it's like those boots don't work they're like oh what if you try this instead it's so much fun it's a safe place to implement the skill of style because again we don't learn by learning we learn by doing and I've created a safe place for you to do the skill you've learned so that you can build that confidence because doing the thing is going to give you that momentum and confidence that you need and doing it with other women is it just lights you up it's it's a game changer every month there's lifestyle coaching so in addition to that community where you can get feedback from me there is a set call it's live you can join if you're like okay, I've gone through steps five through six or five through nine or whatever, and I'm stuck here. Like, I have a question about this. Do these actually work for me? You could put the jeans on, bring them on camera and get my real-time coaching. At the beginning of every coaching call, there's also a short style coaching for me this month. For instance, the coaching is going to be on what shoes to pair with what denim silhouettes, right? Because 
we got so used to skinny jeans and you show the ankle and you do the low cut booty and it's good. And then they changed it. And so I'm going to help you figure out what shoes go with what silhouettes, what to do, what not to do, and how to update what you already have. It's going to be a really fun call. If you can't make the call, there is a form. If you have a question, you fill it out. I answer on the call. You listen to the replay. It goes into the private podcast. You can listen on your own time and you still get your question answered. I, I put the link in the chat. I hope to see you inside of the Style Society. I hope that you have enough faith in yourself that you can learn the skill of style, that you will want to start implementing what you've learned, that you will start having fun with style again. Carrie says, before getting married and having kids, my style was much dressier. My husband's style is very casual. If I do dress up, we look so mismatched. Any, any suggestions? Carrie, I would say that what's really fun about marriage is that when one person levels up, the other person should, and usually does, level up too. So if you really enjoy like a little bit more elevated style and you guys are going on date nights, what if you suggested to him like, hey, what if we both leveled up? I'll tell you, there is nothing like putting a man in some new clothes that fit him that aren't his like scrubby clothes. A woman will tear herself apart. This, my thighs are too big or my stomach is this and that. A man will put it on. You tell him he looks good. Girl, try this before your next date night, Carrie. You tell him he looks good and he's going to eat it up. And he's going to want to elevate every time you go out. Bring them up with you. I know a lot of women are held back from showing up the way they want to because mm, I don't want to be the only one like dressed up at the playground, the only one dressed up in the office. Like it's a really casual office. But I'll tell you what, there is something that happens when you start elevating yourself, your mindset changes, your energy changes, your outlook changes, and they want more of what you have. Instead of you being brought down by this level down here, you start bringing everyone up with you. The domino effect of style cannot be denied. And I don't know any husband who doesn't want to see their wife looking and feeling their best, right? Husbands are visual creatures. He's going to love it. And if you feel awkward, just lean into that confidence. And if he won't elevate his outfits, but I'm sure he would, then you just, you know, you got it. And he is going to eat it up. Lindsay said, Justin and Haley Bieber. Oh, see, okay. The Justin and Haley Bieber thing, I've got opinions. I might not go there. He needs to show up for his girl. That was ridiculous. He needs to elevate with her. It does make a difference. It definitely makes a difference. Look, I could talk to him in my face about the style of society, what happens when you get dressed, what happens when you show up, what happens when you elevate and you bring her with you and you bring him and your marriage gets spicier and your kids are like, mommy, you look so pretty. Where are you going? And then they get used to it. And then they start seeing that, oh, it's motherhood doesn't equal martyrdom. Mommy actually can look pretty. And then she's nicer and better. And your friends at work, notice like oh her productivity is like through the roof and she's getting a raise and what's happening what am I missing out on right friends are starting to ask you like well what are you doing like you look so good can you help me get dressed it turns into a whole thing I could talk about it all day but look it's not just me. It's other women that are having these results, okay? These are real style wins from the Style Society. Women that are leveling up that where like Marnie, getting dressed is easier. Who doesn't want getting dressed to be easier? She had those things in her closet. She just didn't know how to put them together. She did buy the Adidas Sambas from the Style Guide. And that was one of the pops of trends that I mentioned in the Style Guide. Had everything else and put it together in a new way. And she's having fun doing it. I've been doing this for over 10 years, styling. I have styled, you know, Hollywood red carpet. I have styled editorial shoots. I have styled women for brand photo shoots for their business, family photo shoots, you name it. I've styled it. And the results can be denied. The domino effect of style cannot be denied. Do you want the smile on their faces 
Like, can you look at them and think, oh yeah, they look miserable? No, these are photos that women have put into the style society because they put on an outfit and realize, oh my gosh, this is so good. I need to share it. Like I'm actually doing this. I'm actually showing up the way that I know I can. You can live your lifestyle. And I hope that you will join me inside the Style Society. The link is in the chat. You can go to jamiebaker.com slash join. As soon as you join, you get access to everything I talked about. Better than that, you take that first step of believing in yourself to actually learn the skill of style, the momentum starts there. That's the hardest part. It's like showing up for a workout. I do these strength workouts with Peloton and Jess Sims always says, you've already done the hardest part. You showed up, you got here. The rest is a cakewalk, right? When you commit to doing it, everything changes. You commit to doing the work. You take in those 10 quick steps, you figure it out, you start implementing, you get in community, you start evolving and elevating your style, and you start seeing those domino effects. You start feeling the way you want to feel. Because to me, it's not about the clothes you wear. It's about the life you live in your clothes. Life happens in the everyday, mundane moments, the things we do over and over and over again not in the big extravagant fundraisers and big vacations that last five days compared to the other 360 we're at home. Life happens where you are and you have a choice. Do you want to keep showing up the same, being overwhelmed, going through life, not figuring it out, maybe not knowing the skill of style and how to pass it on to your kids or feeling stuck, like, I know I can get to that next level. Like, I, I want the promotion. I want the spicier marriage. I want to feel confident. Style is not the only thing that's going to do that for you. But in my experience, it is the quickest way to start the momentum of getting there. You can put on an outfit that you love and tell me you've never experienced the back to school. Have you ever experienced the back to school feeling of like, the new outfit, you lay it out the night before, you can't wait to get dressed that morning. That energy, that back to school outfit energy is something that can be a part of your life. And you're no longer shimmying up in your pants or feeling like, I don't know if I wore the right thing. You have confidence in the clothes you put on your body. So you can stop thinking about the clothes. It's not about the clothes. It's about the life you live in your clothes. Do you have any questions about the Style Society? Any questions about joining and what happens? I'll tell you the biggest question I get. What if I'm losing weight? What if I do lose weight eventually? What if I buy a new pair of jeans and, you know, next year I'm a different size? Or what if I buy a new wardrobe and next year I'm a different size? The worst thing about that would be that for 365 days, you showed up for yourself and you got dressed because 365 days is a lot of days to feel frustrated and overwhelmed and to have self-confidence issues, to not put the spice in your marriage and not show up your best at work. It's a lot of days to settle and that compounds. What if you got dressed every day for 365 days? Who would you be a year from now? What things could you accomplish on your to-do list? 2024 is around the corner and it's yours for the taking. You can look good and get all the things done on your to-do list, or you could settle and not feel confident and try to chip away at them. It hits different. It's totally up to you, but don't let the perfect unicorn moment that arrives and I'm the perfect weight and the perfect budget and the kids are the perfect age and all of the stars align and then I'll go shopping. It's not about that. It's about deciding to live now and to step in to the woman you're becoming. So I hope to talk with you inside of the group. Lindsay says, why did that make me want to cry? It's so true, worth it, and the size, even if it's just 365 days. I don't think we look at it that so often. I think we're so quick as women to judge ourselves like, well, that would be a waste of money. Would it though? You could do it at any budget. Are you a waste of money? 
No, what's a waste of money is all of the fast fashion dupes and the gotta have this to stay on top. And can I tell you something? Just because it's popular, just because it's viral, does not mean it's cute or flattering. I mean, do you like what you like? 100% on board with that. But you don't need platform ups, okay? Just because they're sold out everywhere does not mean they're cute. It means somebody's making a big commission, but they might not be for you. Yay, Lindsay, I can't wait to meet you. Yay, Jamie, I can't wait to meet you inside too. We are going to have so much fun. You can join the Facebook group right away. I'm probably gonna hop in there later today with a video, just welcoming the new members. I'm just really excited for your future to see what 2024 is gonna look like for you. And even if you're going through a weight transition, because that's one of the biggest topics is you can buy a mini capsule wardrobe to get you through the fluctuation, right? But I want you to be honest with yourself. Are you actively losing weight or is it something you want to do? Because I would argue that if you're not actively losing weight, buying clothes that make you feel really good are going to catapult you in to actively losing weight. If it's something you want to do, it doesn't have to be something you want to do. You can have style at any size, any lifestyle, any budget, any age. It is for everybody. When did we stop believing that playing dress up was done? Like dress up is fun. Trying on clothes with your girlfriend is fun. Putting clothes on that make you feel good is fun. Why do we believe now that it's just like not worth it? It's just not, it's a waste of money. I think we've just, that overconsumption, right? It can be a thing. Any questions? When you join, you can hop in the group and meet the most incredible ladies you've ever met. Honestly, there are so many age ranges, style types. You can get encouraged, but you can also get inspired by their outfits for like, oh, I never thought to style a blazer that way. It's really, really a fun place to be. And seriously, no mean girls. Oh, Claire asks, you have recommendations of where to shop for petite in Canada. I find so many stores like Uniqlo and even Zara have this boxy style that just doesn't work for my short torso. I am not super familiar with Canada, but I do know that most of the bigger box stores, I don't think you guys have Nordstrom anymore, do carry petite brands and they do ship to Canada. So I know that, yeah, Zara, it, it all looks like fun and games online, but I don't know if you've ever been into a store. I can't with all that noise and all the stuff everywhere. It's too overwhelming. You can find gyms 100%, but um, Uniqlo, I do like their trousers. Um, any other questions? I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. We do have members from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, from all over the place. It's really fun. Business owners, teachers. <laughs> Lindsay said she just got it and there's so many resources. They're there for you. If you want to use them, you can. I think another question is like, oh my gosh, if I join and don't have time to like listen to classes and stuff, that's fine. You there, Seasons will ebb and flow, but you will know that you're gonna have a style guide and a podcast episode delivered to your inbox for whenever you want to reference it. So that you know, when you go to curate your wardrobe for the season, you know what to look for. And if you wanna get involved and be active in the group and get on live coaching with me and do all of those things, those are there for you. But if for a few months, you're just like, you know, I'm just gonna look at the guide. December 1st, the holiday style guide comes out and that's gonna be really fun. In December, we always do a holiday party, a styled social, we get in our Christmas pajamas, we meet on Zoom together, we play some games, it's really fun. Um, it, it's maybe borderline cheesy, but it's really fun. And we all get to see each other's faces, which is great. Yes, three months is the minimum. So three months is a full season. So a three month minimum of coming in and getting those guides to give you everything you need for the season. Jamie said she's excited to see Lindsay's first outfit. I am too. You're welcome, Karen. All right, you guys, I'm going to hop off of here. I know you're busy. You've got things to do. If you have any questions, 
please shoot me an email, hello at jamiebaker.com. Remember, you can join by going to jamiebaker.com slash join. And I can't wait to meet you inside. Have a great day, everyone.